Okay, check this out. 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. I think this is probably the most important SUV of 2024. Today, we're gonna to talk about what's new with the Santa Fe, if you should buy one or upgrade. At the same time, we're gonna take it for a test drive. But before we do that, special thanks goes to our great friends at Don Valley Hyundai. They're a Hyundai dealership located just north of Toronto. They're kind enough to allow me to borrow this thing for the day, take it for a spin, show you everything you need to know. If you wanna check out this thing in person, don't forget to check out the link in the description below. At the same time, you can reach out to my good friend, G. But for now, let's talk about this beauty. Let's start first with the exterior. I wanna start with the rear end specifically because this is completely new for 2024. If you remember the Santa Fe was very round, well, that's not the case over here. This is a bit more boxy and I love what they've done with this. Why? Well, I'm a big fan of the Defender. You guys know that. I love that boxy style. This gets close to it. And I know some people have said that it looks like a Land Rover Defender in some ways, but it's okay to get inspired by other designs. It's not a bad thing but it's not a copy and paste. That's something to keep in mind. I think maybe the designer did see a bit of that Defender in it, and I think that's totally fine. I love the panel on this side. Again, a little bit inspired from the Defender. I love the whole design to the rear end, and there's a few quirks in here. First thing you notice, the tail lights that have the H design. This part, that part. These are for the daylight running lights. Those are tail lights in this case. Then you have your brake lights, and the turning signal is actually located at the bottom, right on here. Then you have the reverse lights, which are also at the bottom in this case. And then you have the Santa Fe badge all the way across with the Hyundai badge in the center. Next thing you notice, no rear wiper. It's not visible, it's actually hidden inside here. Really nice touch. They've thought about the little details. This glass here kind of feels like you can open it, but you can't. I think they would have made it a little bit more interesting, but that's okay. It gives you a lot of visibility. Moving on to the bottom part here, we have the camera and the button to open the tailgate, which it is, of course, power, and it gives you that kick option. But look at how much space this thing gives you when you open the tailgate because the way it is designed flat. I love that. More details. We have the H design, the same thing here at the top when you open it. A little hidden, uh, an Easter egg, if you want to call it that way. But in terms of the actual tailgate, I'm 6'2", how much space you get when you open the tailgate, because that's important. You're moving, you don't want to touch it with your head and hurt yourself. You can also adjust the position to different levels. That's just the highest it reaches. And then you press the button, and then it locks. And look at that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the actual exhaust tip. With the hybrid model, you don't get a single exhaust tip. But because this is a 2.5 liter turbo, you get a single one on the right side. Cargo space, do you get more this year? Well, let me show you. Behind the third row, you get about 14.6 cubic feet of space, which is slightly better than the outgoing model. And then behind the second row, you get about 40.5 cubic feet of space. And then with the all seat fold, you get about 71 cubic feet of space. On top of that, there is some extra space in here that you can make use of it, and the spare tire is located underneath. But they are including two buttons in this case. You can fold the seats here automatically, manually, from the back, but then you have two buttons on this side to fold the second row automatically. Moving on to the side profile here. First of all, same thing here, the glass, beautiful. You also get the option for a grab on with the uh, off-road package, which this is not. But over here, they have included sort of like a grab-on handle to get on top because it does come with a roof rack, not this one. I love the design for the rails as well. Very unique, very different. Then moving on to this side over here, we have two-tone finish. And even the door handles are designed to match the overall theme of the car, which I really appreciate. Wheels. Now these are 20 inch wheels, but you get 18 inch with the base model, you get 20 inch with this one, limited, which is the package that we have, and then for the calligraphy, you get 21 inch wheels. Moving on to the front side, little details. It says on the side over here, Santa Fe. Then the turning signal in the mirror, very small in comparison to the outgoing model. Different design, side mirrors as well for barrel aerodynamics. Then you have the blacked out finish here. In this case is glossy black for the overall trim, which again, 
really helps the overall color because this is white on the outside. I don't mind it. Now, moving on to the front side over here because more quirks. The first thing you notice, totally different design. One model that I think is very similar to the new Santa Fe is the Ford Flex. I don't know if you guys remember, but Ford did make at some point a Ford Flex, but mostly this part over here. And that was felt smaller than this. This is bigger. The H logo continues with the daylight running lights, left side, right side, all the way to the center. We have this beautiful chrome finish in here. And then at the bottom, same thing, the H design over onto this side, which I think is quite unique. They've included a lot of H designs in this, which stands for Hyundai, of course. And then you have the camera at the front, but it's a nice flush design overall, which I do appreciate. Then you have the headlights, high beams, low beams located right in here. These also function as turn signal, the H for the left side and the right side. Overall, the front end, aggressive, luxurious. It looks great. I like it. In terms of dimensions, is this thing bigger than the outgoing uh, 2023 model? Yes, in fact, this is 190.2 inches long. It has a wheelbase of 110.8. It is wide at 74.8, and it has a height of 69.7 inches. So it is bigger in comparison to the 2023 model. And you notice that when I parked this beside at the dealership, the old Santa Fe, you can tell this feels and looks a lot bigger. The next thing that I noticed with this car is the doors. Hyundai tends to make very light doors in general. Not sure whether it's the quality, but these feel pretty heavy, I have to say. One reason could also be because the window, the glass insulator, it is better for the front. You also get the option to do the same thing for the back side so that the cabin noise is reduced. So you get a more comfortable ride. But the same thing with the door in the back, it actually feels very, very heavy in comparison to the other models. Okay, let's talk about what do we have under the hood for this year. Well, first thing you need to know is that the 2.5 liter natural aspirated is gone. They dropped that engine. Now we have two engines. There is a 1.6 liter um, engine, which is a turbocharged one. And there is a 2.5 liter, which is the one that we have for today's video, also a turbocharged engine. Let's talk about the specs. The 1.6 liter SmartStream turbo four cylinder engine produces 178 brake horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. You can also get it with a six speed automatic transmission. The combine between the hybrid and the 1.6 liter four cylinder engine makes 231 brake horsepower and 271 pound feet of torque. If you live in the US, you can get the option for a front wheel drive, but Canadians only get the H track all wheel drive. And then you have the 2.5 liter turbo engine, which makes 277 brake horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. It uses an eight speed dual clutch transmission, wet type with Shiftronic manual mode. Now the engine used in this specific model that we have for today's video is similar to the one that you see in the Kia Sorento. And I've driven that car before. I found it to be quite powerful for the size of it. And this is essentially the same engine as that. Now, the new Santa Fe comes with uh, seven seats. Yes, it comes with a third row, which is quite nice. And uh, they say that you can actually fit people in the back. Well, let's try that. I'm 6'2". And first thing you need to do is press that button and the seat moves forward automatically. There's also a button on the side over here. But let's see. I'm going to put my phone in there if I can get into the third row. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, I'm actually shocked at how much headroom you have in here. I thought it would be smaller. Let's try and... Okay, that's about it. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. 
actually gives you a lot of space in here, shockingly. They've made the third row in a small SUV. Like, this is not even the Palisade. I'm very shocked, very impressed as well. Here's what you get in here. First, there's this massive panoramic roof in the back. It is a split option, meaning the front has one and then the back one has a bigger one, which is nice. There's cup holders on this side, cup holders on that side. There is a rear uh, climate units for the right side, which you can control the uh, speeds and turn it on and turn it off. There's a USB-C port on the right side. There's a USB-C There's a USB -C port on the left side. And if you look carefully, the design of the vents in the back match the H design of the exterior. I like that. Then you have lights at the top in here, one on this side, one on the right side. In terms of visibility, this rear window, it's actually quite big for the size of the vehicle. This is nice, I like that. Very comfy in here, and you do get Isoflex in the back. That means that you can put your child seats in the third row. Overall, quite impressed. You can also do, there's a button over here to fold the seats. Now let's try and come out. Not bad, not bad at all for a third row. Man, we move this into the front and then we jump into the second row. First thing, the side step over here, also matching that H uh, design, which I really like. And you can move the seats back and forth. You can adjust it. At the same time, you can fold it like this to give you more space. And here we go. The leather matching, again, the H track onto the side. Really nice touch. The heated seat button located onto the door panel. Let's get inside. It's actually pretty good, I have to say. I'm very impressed with the overall uh, space in this car. Really nice. Kind of feels like a theater mode where you're sitting higher in the back and you're looking down at the front. Uh, there's a sunshade on the side for both. They've thought for both windows, which is quite nice. There's an air vent on the left here matching the H uh, here as well. The same thing behind the seat. There is the H uh, badge. Then you have the two hangers if you want to hang a bag or something like that. Each seat has a USB-C port, one on the left, one on the right side. With this package, you don't get a climbing unit in the second row, which is quite interesting. Maybe with the uh, calligraphy, the highest trim you do. Then in the center, there is this massive thing here to give you extra space, which is quite nice. And it also has an armrest, which can be open from the front and the back to make use of that space. Quite impressive what they've done with this. And if we look carefully, we've got an armrest with two cup holders. So you got two cup holders in here, two on this side, two on that side, one each at the bottom. So you got three, three, six, eight cup holders in the back. That's a lot. It's a family SUV. You need that. Now, visibility overall, pretty good. Let's jump into the front. Okay. There we go. First row, driver's cockpit. My team guy, camera guy behind, said that the first thing he noticed is the steering wheel, which reminds me, reminds him of a Range Rover. I'm not gonna dispute that. It does look a bit like a Range Rover, but that's okay. It's an inspiration. One of my favorite brands, Range Rovers. And this thing is that. It also comes with the Morse code for H, I was told. Um, the steering wheel is nice. I like the design, actually. It's very simple yet functional, but also luxurious at the same time, which is quite interesting. The overall design of the cabin, especially this area, continues with that H design, like including the interior lighting, the ambient lighting, which is nice. H, if you look at this chrome finish from the left all the way to the right, it's the H logo. Same thing with the air vents. Everything is H in here lights and all that. Then you have the design of the door panel. Again, new. I love this chrome material for the trim. The door handle is nice and flush design. The buttons are different. It's a new experience with Hyundai. I like this. For the driver, lots of space, comfortable. Now let's get into the details. So let's start first with this area. Behind the steering wheel, we have a 12.3 inch massive curved display, something we saw with Sonata. 
The steering wheel is nice and grippy itself. You have the Morse code for H in the center. This aluminum finish, I would say, or chrome. It's really nice. I love this design. Really cool. Paddle shifters are nice. Steering wheel is nice and grippy. You can adjust the column manually. And then behind it, you have the gear selector. You can put it to drive, you can put a park in reverse, which is quite nice. This is touchscreen. It's easy to use. It's the new user interface for Hyundai vehicles. Really nice. I like it. It's uh, very minimalistic. That's one thing I can tell about this. There's not a lot of uh, designs and not very flashy like the previous one. It's very simple and that's what matters. Top of that, you got a beautiful 360 camera with this package and the 3D view of the vehicle, which is matching, which matches the exterior paint. I like that. There's different views for the cameras. You can see really nice and it comes in real handy. We have a 6.5 inch screen here for the climate unit. Everything it is touch screen from the fan speeds, AC. We have heated seats in the front with three levels. You also have ventilated seats in the front with this package with three levels, both driver side and passenger. Uh, you can control the rear climate unit from here or the front side. And then you have more buttons onto the side here. How to hold, drive modes, traction, downhill assist. That's for the camera and the parking sensor. Then you have the climate unit onto the side. At the top, there's more buttons that you can control the actual infotainment display, which is nice. That's for your volume and that you can uh, customize to whatever you want it to be. Easy use. Now, the center part here is quite interesting. You have a wireless charging pad on the left side, but then you have this side that you're probably wondering, but that's actually for another wireless charging pad, which comes with the calligraphy package. Something you don't get with this one, but you at least get one. Then you have USB-C ports, USB-C ports, and you have this button that you can switch from charging USB and so on. So that way you don't waste the energy. This is pretty cool. Um, and then on the right side, you have for the charging. And the this part over here is for your wireless charging pod, showing you the levels, with it, which I think is pretty nice and handy. On the right side, for the passenger side, you've got a lot of compartments. It's this one here, which you can use. But this also comes with the highest trim, sanitizer which essentially sanitizes things you can put stuff in there to sanitize but doesn't come with this package but in this case you can make use of it as a compartment which i think is quite nice and then at the bottom you have the standard compartment but then there's more space underneath here that the passenger can use but also the driver i think that's smart this is an armrest not hard to understand right well guess what you can open it both ways that's one way and then there's another way now, here's the interesting fact. You're probably looking at this and going, well, that's just a standard compartment. It is. Guess what? If you remove that, you get more space underneath. It's kind of like a hidden compartment. And if you come close, you can see inside there's a lot more space. In fact, I can put my entire hand like this all the way to the front. It continues all the way to the front. It's kind of like a hidden compartment. And there you go. Front passenger can make use of it. Also the driver and the backside can make use of it. That's brilliant. Look at that. That's a smart design. Throttle all the way. Not bad at all. Let's talk about the price. What are you gonna pay for this bad boy? Well, here's the thing. In Canada, they only offer all-wheel drive, but in the US, you get a front-wheel drive or you can get the all-wheel drive H-Track. I think it's about $1,800 to $2,000 or so if you want to upgrade. Pricing for Canada, the base model starts at $41,000. That is for the 1.6 T preferred hybrids with the seven seats. Then you have the 1.6 T preferred hybrids with the trans package, all wheel drive, seven passenger, it's $44,000, $45,000. Then you have the 2.5T XRT, which is the off-road version. That one with seven passengers starts at about $47,000. Then there's the luxury, which is the one that we have for today's video at, with the 2.5 turbo uh, with seven passenger, it starts at $50,000. Meanwhile, the ultimate calligraphy, starts at 53,500 in Canada. In the US, the base model 
starts at about $33,000, $34,000. That is for the 2.5 liter turbo front wheel drive. That is reasonably priced. But in the US, the trims are a lot more in comparison to Canada because the way they design in terms of the drivetrain in the US, you get the front wheel drive in Canada, you don't. And then all the way to the calligraphy, it's at 48,800, uh, so about $49,000 US. Is that a good price? Yes. Let me explain why. This car offers so much and it's gonna be an absolute hot cake for Hyundai. This is probably the best SUV so far. Now we're in March, it's still early, but so far this is the best SUV for the money. It offers so much space. Yes, the third, behind the third row you don't get a lot of space, but it's a small SUV, so it's not a full size. If you've got like two kids, would say three kids, this would be a pretty good deal. It's got the power, that 2.5 liter turbo pulls hard. Like, that was a quick pickup. Really like the engine, delivers a lot of performance for the money. It is all wheel drive. The eight speed DCT is superb in this thing. It shifts quickly. It's very quiet on the inside. I am very impressed with this car. I have to say this SUV is really nice. I think they've hit the nail. On the outside, I know people are gonna say it looks like Defender. It's okay, I don't mind it because at the end of the day, it's okay to be inspired. People that are shopping for a three row SUV at a $50,000 budget are not even looking at the Defender that it's $110,000. They're looking at this and this is a great start, but it's not a Defender copycat. It's got some inspiring designs by the Defender, but it's not nearly as the level of the Defender. But it's a great start. It's a really nice SUV. I love the interior, I love the design. It also feels a nice build quality. Now here's one thing you need to know about that build quality. The 2.5 liter turbo is manufactured in the US. The 1.6 hybrid is manufactured in Korea. So they've gone the other way now. Um, so this one that we're driving is a US made Hyundai. I am impressed with Hyundai. They have done a great job. I really like this SUV. I love how it drives and I really like this thing. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and check out my other videos on my channel.